So the, the last talk of this session uh, is from Dr. Marc Tardieu uh, from the Hôpital Universitaire Paris Sur, Le Cremant Bicetre, who's going to talk about the update on phase one, two clinical trial of intracerebral administration of uh, an AB5 vector, AB vector expressing NAGLO in children with MPS3B. Thank you, and thank you for the invitation. Five years ago, we initiated a phase one, phase two clinical trial of intracerebral administration of this AV25 inactive vector in children with MPS3B, the San Filippo type B syndrome. The first results, have, and gathering all the information at 30 months post administration, have been published recently in the Lancet Neurology, but I will update them today because four, uh, three of the four patients have reached the four-year mark post-administration. This is really a, a, a teamwork, and I will acknowledge my co-workers soon, but uh, I do have disclosures, which are here, and the financial support of MPS3B trial are indicated. Before coming to the trial itself, I would like to spend a few minutes on all the preclinical and pre-trial work we had to do before submitting a protocol, and this took almost 15 years. First, we did some preclinical studies of intracerebral administration of the same vector in MPS1, a different uh, enzyme, and MPS2B animal models in mice and in dogs, and for some experiments in uh, non-human primates. This is mostly the work of Jean-Michel Heard at the Pasteur Institute, and during those studies, we learned that we can deliver the vector genome, and we can detect the enzyme in large part of the brain. It persists over the long term, and the biochemical and histological markers consistently improved in the almost entire brain. There's no major safety concern in animals, and two caveats. First, we found no vector almost in cerebellum, if we inject in the hemisphere. And second, we need an effective immunosuppression, uh, at least in dogs, to avoid the rejection of the transfect cells by the immune system and some inflammation. This was very good preclinical work, and we did some tox studies uh, with a vector in parallel. But we had also to answer many uh, pre-trial and clinical questions uh, to design the, the, the protocols. In fact, eight years ago, when we start to think about the protocol in practical way, the information about the disease were very weak. It was said that the onset was around three to five, which is untrue. Uh, it was marked, the evolution was marked by a severe neurological uh, symptoms with progressive cognitive deterioration, which is very imprecise, and after 10, loss of independent walking and early death. So this cannot be used for a trial. So we had to answer several questions. First, we had to define the incidence, such an important point for future development. We have to define the inclusion criteria, what means to treat early, very early in life, how early is early uh, in this specific disease, we have to define clinical endpoints for relatively short-term trials, and we need focused natural histories, focused on early events, and focused on quantitative uh, uh, markers. And we have to know about surrogate markers, MRI. We know there's a brain atrophy in the disease, but could we have surrogate markers and quantitative markers? and biological markers, enzymatic activity, accumulation substrates, inflammatory markers, could that be surrogate markers or not? We try to answer those questions through a retrospective study, gathering all the cases in France, UK, and Greece over the, a little bit more than 10 years. And we answered a few questions. The estimate number of new cases per year in the European Union, the 27 countries, was 33.5 MPS3A and 14 MPS3B, again for 160 million people altogether, probably the same in US. 
Second, the mean age at diagnosis of MPS3A and B in France, and actually the same in the UK, was almost five with a very large range, which is a real concern when you want to treat children very early. Third, we try to define possible endpoints for clinical trials by taking all the major uh, clinical events during the early years we, to have a median time of occurrence and a range. For example, the onset of cognitive delay came at the median age of 3.5 years with a large range of 1 year and 0.3, which means this cannot be used in a trial. Fortunately enough, in parallel, several prospective and quantitative studies have been made on early cognitive events in MPS3A and B by the Minneapolis group and by Trixel. So we use these studies and we learn first that MPS3A and B children have about the same evolution. Second, these studies gave typical curve of decline of uh, uh, cognitive abilities over the early years of the study. For example, in this study by uh, Elsa Shapiro, you have here the chronological age, you have the developmental age here, I have some trouble with the mice. For this specific test, you have the normal children here and the normal range for normal children. Here is in red the typical curve of evolution of MPS3A children. This has been done on 24 patients tested uh, several times. If we could take only the patient uh, with an early onset. There is some variation from patient to patient, but you can see that uh, the, the peak of development is around the age of between two and three years of age. And after three, age, three years, they are going down. And after four years, the decline is very deep. And the author also gave the rate of, de of uh, decline of the developmental quotient per year for one year with a range of it, which is extremely useful for a trial. So having this preclinical information in animals, having this pretrials information in, in children, we have been allowed by the French authorities to include four patients in a phase one, phase two trial. I'm sorry, I forgot to say that, unfortunately, we have no good MRI uh, quantitative studies before the, the, the trial, so we, the brain volume development will be difficult to assess, and this will be a very complicated study to be performed, simply because the early ch uh, children have a growth in their brain, and the disease will uh, I induce a decrease in brain growth, and the combination of two would be hard to analyze. And we have no biological surrogate markers. We know that the enzymatic activity in CSF cannot be used as a surrogate marker. Mm -hmm. So again, having all this information, we have been allowed to include four patients. So here are all my co-authors, and in fact, 100 people or more were involved in this trial, so it was very different people from the neurosurgeon to the neuropsychologist to the neuroideologist, etc. The main characteristic of the trial was to include four patients before their fifth birthday and the youngest among eligible ones. It was intracerebral delivery in brain and cerebellum, because brain is not enough to reach cerebellum, which is useful for cognitive development. And the vector was an AV25 and a group vector performed by Unicure. We add an immunosuppression uh, to try to avoid uh, rejection of transduced cells. It started 14 days before injection with tacrolimus and uh, mycophenolate mofetil, Salcept, at relatively high doses initially. Salcept were kept for six weeks post-injection and tacrolimus was progressively reduced over the four years to be now at a very low level uh, and tacrolimus alone. We also add a little bit of uh, steroids, one milligram per kilogram for 10 days, starting the day before surgery. The primary endpoint was safety and tolerance. 
And the secondary endpoint was evidence for therapeutic uh, effects. Here are the characteristics of the four patients. You have the, the age at inclusion, one month before injection, 20 months, 26 months, 30 months, and 53 months, very young children. They all have a very severe phenotype. Patient one has an older brother with the same mutation and a very severe evolution. I won't go into detail of the cognitive test now, I will do it later on, but let's notice at this point that the youngest patients, uh, patient one, performed at about the same uh, level than this chronological age, 20 months, which was not the case for the others. For example, patient four, at four years and a half, had the performance around 26 months, a real uh, difference between the two. Surgery was a single procedure, and we made four incisions on each side and eight beer holes. You can see them here. And we introduced in the beer holes this very small catheter, and 16 microcatheters target, targeted the white matter, frontal, median, and posterior, and in the cerebellum again. One was deep, and one was more superficially, and altogether, we, did, we made 16 simultaneous in, injections during two hours, injecting each time 60 microliters, and altogether, one patient received four 10 to the 12 viral genomes uh, during these two hours. We have no problem during the surgery and no material vigilance related adverse events. So we injected four 10 to the 12 to, to the patients and test the outcome of the vector during the minute and the days after injection. Vector was detected in blood right at the end of injection, three minutes after the end of injection, but two hours after its onset, despite the very slow injection in the brain. The peak of detection was one to 12 hours after injection, and no more virus was detected in blood after two days and in urines after three days. Interferon alpha was not detected at the peak of viral detection, and no neutralizing antibodies against AV5 was found at baseline, and one, uh, one year later, but I will come to, to it uh, later on. The mean true dose of tacrolimus were, were in the range, expected range, as you can see here, and again, it was reduced, and now, the, the mean true dose of tacrolimus is very low after 30 months, almost 48 uh, months for most of the patients now. First endpoint was safety and tolerance. Through a very precise survey, the, patient, the parents had to send me a mail every week giving me all the small information. We gathered 125 adverse events. Six were severe because they required a very short hospitalization. That was over the first uh, 31 months, one month before injection and 30 months after, and 18 adverse events during the next 18 months. The main events were benign infection, was ex which was expected in very young children, and diarrhea, which is part of the disease. Brain imaging, in terms of toxicity, no sign of blood effusion, no sign of toxicity and no sign of inflammation, even early, which was a surprise to me. So we had the information, we have uh, brain imagery at the baseline, eight days, three months, 12 months, 30 months, and now at four years. Biology, there's only one uh, signal. Patient two had high transaminase one month after surgery, and again, four years later. There was no lymphopenia, and no creatinine, high creatinine, which is possible with immunosuppression. Suppressor. In conclusion, it was a good tolerance over the four year of follow-up. Secondary endpoints, the evaluation of efficacy. Here, we have the neurocognitive evaluations, we have the serial brain measurements, and we have the biological markers, enagluenzyme enzyme detection in CSF and plasma, immune response against enaglu, and other markers like heparin sulfate in CSF and inflammatory markers in CSF. All these have their challenge and limitations. If we take the neurocognitive evaluation first, 
the, the challenge is the comparison and the difference in age between children. We took for comparison the work of Elsa Shapiro and uh, Whitley, recently published in the Journal of Pediatrics, but also the work of Truxa et al. Criteria 1 was a difference with the published evolution of uh, developmental age over time during the natural history of MPS3 A and B children, the curve I showed you a minute ago. And our criteria two was a difference with a published decline in developmental caution, which is published at minus 14 points per year with the range you, you can see, which means over two year, uh, four years, 49 months, minus 60 points with uh, a range from minus 48 to minus 71. This is to compare to the result of uh, the children we treated. Here are the results at 30 months for the four patients. You have patient one, two, uh, three, and four, the chronological age and the developmental age as measured with three different tests. We use the Brunelisin, which is very close to the American Ballet, uh, which was used by Isa Shapiro, uh, except for patient one, after the age of three, we use the KABC and other tests. We use also the Vineland test, which was used in Minneapolis, and the PEP3 test. The two tests have been designed for patients with communication disorder or behavioral disorder. Fortunately enough, at least for us, the three tests gave very consistent data for a given child. You have the normal children here, and you have the curve you already saw in the past for the evolution of the, in the natural history of MPS3A patient or about the same in B, although it is less very young children in the, in, in the other paper. Patient one, as you can see, performed much better than the expected. He had the evaluation at baseline one year later and two and a half years later. It was not exactly the same for patient two and three, which have better results than expected. Patient four had some decline, but again, still outside of the range, uh, of expected range. Now, if we take our criteria two, uh, at 30 months, the loss of IQ was less than expected in the four patients, but this was much more uh, evident for patient one, the youngest. Now, the next question is, whether this cognitive benefit will persist or if the disease will retrieve its natural course after a certain time lag. At four years, we have the result for patient two, three, and four. Patient one will have his evaluation uh, in one month. The four years will come uh, next month. But from clinical evaluation, I know that he is about at this level uh, now. She is going to school, at to nursery school. Patient four, the oldest, had about the same level uh, as uh, at uh, 30 months, at 48 months, still outside of the expected range. Same is true for patient three, when patient two clearly uh, had a different outcome with some decline, although still outside of the expected range. If we take our criteria two, the decline of uh, IQ, it was all for all the patients, except again patient one, which had not been tested yet, outside of the expected range, better than the expected range. As for MRI, we have no perfect quantitative data, as I said, but patient one had a normal brain growth with thin ventricles. You can see him, see he, her, at 20 months, and again f at 51 months, uh, two years and a half after injection. Particles are thin and no evidence of, 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 uh, of brain atrophy. Patient two to four have stable MRI. Uh, if you take the oldest patient, patient four, at four years and a half, this aspect, and two, uh, two years and a half later, about the same aspect, no clear cut uh, brain atrophy. It's also interesting to compare patient one, treated patient one at 51 months, to untreated patient four at about the same age, clearly there is a difference. At four years, there is no sign of brain atrophy in patient, two to four, in patient three and four, slightly different for patient two, which has some degrees of, uh, of uh, I'm sorry, for patient three, which has some degrees of brain atrophy, but very, very little. 
We also be able to test the enzymatic activity in CSF and plasma. In CSF, we had to concentrate the CSF in normal children in order to be able to detect the enzymatic activity. In the six-fold uh, six, uh, concentrated CSF, the level of activity was oh yeah, the level of activity was about 57 nanomolar per millimol per milliliter. None of the patients had an activity at baseline; they are sick. But all of them develop a detectable enzymatic activity in CSF and which persists at 48 months at the level of 15 to 20 percent, that's at normal level. In plasma, it was detected in normal children, obviously. None of the patients had activity at onset, but three out of the four had some detectable activity in serum in, at one month post-injection, but no more uh, detection uh, later on. Heparin sulfate in CSF remained high and it was about the same level at inclusion and at 30 months, as you can see here. Finally, in uh, parallel, we test very carefully the immune response of these uh, patients against Enaglu and against AV5. Three different events should be evaluated. First, an innate immune response due to the direct activation of astrocytes and microglia, non-specific, acute, and usually evaluated by cytokine production. And we have also to test the specific immune response against antigenic components to a therapeutic uh, enzyme and vector through the production of neutralizing antibodies by B cells, but much more important, the induction of specific T lymphocyte response. Do we have emergent subset of circulating specific anti enaglu effector and memory T cells? And we have to talk about tolerance could we obtain an immunological tolerance on the long run in these patients? To be short on the first lines, no inflammation was detected in CSF and all the cytokines we measured were absolutely at the same level from just after the, uh, the surgery to uh, 30 months, uh, 30 months uh, later. We detect no antibodies, I said before, against AV5, but we, knew we did not test antibodies against Enaglu because no formal uh, assay was available. And we spent all our energy on the, the evaluation of specific T uh, cells uh, response, the uh, anti-Enaglu T cells response. We tested on circulating lymphocytes by two ways. The abilities of lymphocytes to proliferate when they are challenged ex vivo by two microgram per ml of, uh, of Enaglu and the ability of the cells to have an intracellular production of, uh, uh, of uh, cytokines, and specifically TNF-alpha, uh, after ex vivo stimulation. Here are the results for the four patients. As you can see, you have the result for proliferation in solid lines and for intracellular TNF-alpha production in dotted lines. Blue is for CD4 and orange is for CD8 lymphocytes. At onset, none of the patients were able to, uh, to proliferate or to produce cytokines. They are absolutely naive for Enaglu. They are not tolerant as you are and I am. But all of them will develop after with a slightly different kinetic, both the ability to proliferate to Enaglu and to produce intracellular uh, TNF-alpha. But we test also other cytokines. They have been kind of vaccinated against Enaglu. Interestingly enough, at 30 months, three out of the four had absolutely no more uh, immune response and uh, no more proliferation of T cells or proliferation of cytokines. And the question was tolerance. Unfortunately, at 48 months, none of the patients were able to proliferate, patient two, three, and four, which had been tested, but patient two and three had at 48 months the ability to produce TNF-alpha after the ex vivo stimulation, meaning they are, they are not tolerized to Enaglu after four years. In conclusion, this study demonstrates that intracerebral and cerebral injection of this vector plus immunosuppression could be done and is well tolerated. 
It will also give information on the clinical benefits of patients, but clearly with difference between patients. The youngest having the best results, most probably because of the impact of the disease on the brain before treatment. The enzymatic activity can be detected in CSF at 15 to 20 percent of control, persisting at 48 months, but this is a persistence of high gag level in CSF at 30 months, most probably because the treatment does not stop the disease evolution in meninges, brain capillaries, and choric plexus. The, we know this from animals. This is an important point because the, the, the treatment of these cells, and especially the, the brain capillaries, could be very useful for brain development and, brain and cognitive abilities. Finally, we detect NAGO specific memory and effector CD4 and CD8 lymphocytes uh, in, in circulating blood, and it persists at 48 months, meaning there is no tolerance in these two patients. The next steps are to pursue the follow-up. The formal trial will stop at five years and a half, but we will continue to follow the patients, especially for cognitive development and long-term safety. We have to talk about the immunosuppression and tolerance. Could we stop the immunosuppression at some point? It's not fully resolved at this point. We, it's better in the future to deliver the vector to brain vasculature and meningeal cells, maybe by a peripheral injection, and it would be important to go to a phase three in less than two year old children, very young children. It's probably too late after that. And this hopefully will be done, but we do have a problem of industrial interest for sponsorship and for the, uh, the next steps of the, of the protocol. I will finish here and thanks again to my co-workers, especially Jean-Michel Heard and Michel Zerad, the, the, the neurosurgeon, and the four families, and I thank you. Thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, while we uh, wait for the people to line up for questions, I have uh, just one quest one consideration and one question. Um, because you say that the the antibodies to NAGLU were not measured, but um, I think it would be informative to know whether uh, the fact that you detected um, expression in examining the circulation only a month one, maybe do you have a clearing uh, response that is an antibody response, and whether you also measure uh, T cell responses at the interferon gamma level, or you consider you look we, at We, we tested the interferon gamma as well. It's about the same. It's not exactly the same kinetic, but the ID is about the same. So we have interferon gamma, we have TNF, we have IL-2, uh, I guess. We have, so there will be a specific paper on that. Uh, now, on antibodies against ENAGU, yes, indeed. But we had first to have an essay and to qualify kind of DSA, and that was too much work at that time. But they clearly would prefer to have the antibodies. Might very well be negative. Remember, it's negative against AV5, but I mean, we don't know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tardier. Um, I was wondering if you could comment on the impact that immune suppression could have had in your efficacy endpoints considering the neuroinflammatory component of the disease. Yes, immunosuppression is a very frequent question. The point is in dogs receiving uh, the same treatment and the same enzyme. If you don't immunosuppress them, they do have some kind of encephalitis and the cells are rejected and the enzyme activity is uh, become negative. So you, you have to treat them and treat them on the long run. If you stop it after a certain time lag, you, you have an inflammation after and a rejection of the cells. So we decided to do it with immunosuppression in, in children. And I'm, I'm, an, uh, I'm a pediatric neurologist, but I'm also an immunologist, so I was not so afraid about uh, those drugs. They are now at a very low dose. So the toxicity, the risk of this very low dose is, uh, is very reduced. It's not absent, especially for lymphoma and things like that. Uh, and we check for that, but uh, I think we can keep it. Now, patient four, for example, has no more uh, uh, immune response at 
30 months and 48 months, and we really consider to, to stop to immunosuppression for him, and probably the others after some control uh, in the first one. Next question. Did you see any effects on the peripheral manifestations of the disease, such as hepatomegaly? Did you, did you see any effects of the treatment on peripheral manifestations oh, of the, the peripheral, uh, hepatomegaly or the diarrhea? No, I mean, the dose was detected in, in the blood, probably had some in the, in the liver, and the, uh, the liver enzyme elevation might be related to that, but most probably there is no uh, peripheral effect. And in fact, we did not measure the gag, for example, in urine, but most probably would not be modified. So, uh, Mar Marcus Crump here from Portland. So, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on using a bone marrow transplantation approach for San Filippo, like has been done for metachromatic leukodystrophy. So getting wide distribution of enzyme it's, producing cells. Uh, it has been done and was very negative in the past. Oh. Bone marrow transplantation for MPS3A has been done and no, was... The, well, lentiviral overexpression of, uh, of the enzyme has had a re pretty good um, result. You mean the transform cells? Trans no, no, transplantation bone of transform cells? bone mar marrow transplantation of lentiviral... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I'm, talking I'm, about bone marrow yeah. transplantation in general. No, it has not been done. Uh, could be possible. I mean, no one has tried at this point, as far as I know. Thank you very much. So, uh, and so with this, we close the session. Thank you all for attending, and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Just